What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Son of the Tech once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PC performance for a game called Rhyme, and it's from the developers, or I guess I should say the publishers over at Greybox, who also do a game, free-to-play game called Dreadnought, which is like World of Tanks in Space. That's a super cool game. And they also did Grey Goo, so stick around. Starting things off as always, let's talk about the test bench, which is going to be a 7700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. All the rest of the details are going to be in the description below. So if you want to figure out which motherboard, etc., go down there to check it out so we don't waste any time talking about all the parts. The benchmark run itself is going to be pretty much at the very beginning of the game. After you get out of the ship or wash, uh, wash ashore, I guess you would say, you're going to go ahead and do a couple little puzzles and then you'll find yourself at this kind of center piece. And you're going to turn around and look back where you came from and up to the left there's a path that'll take you to a tower that's also part of a puzzle or at least a part of the very first puzzle. So go walk up there and you will walk through a cavern and then you will drop down on a cliff, shimmy across the cliff, jump up and jump over a gap. That should be about 60 seconds long and that's where we will be getting all of our numbers from for these benchmarks. The settings are going to be the preset for high except for one thing. You're going to want to make sure you turn off VSync as it does turn that on by default. And I think there's a couple reasons for this as far as performance goes. I think they're having some performance issues which we'll talk about here in a second. Resolution is going to be 1080p as always and we will be testing GTX 1060s and RX 580s and below with no higher end cards at this time. So now let's talk about the change in FPS by setting if in case you guys are trying to improve your frame rate as always and this is a portion of the video I enjoy doing a lot but as you'll see here it definitely shows us that we have an issue with anti-aliasing. The anti-aliasing has an improvement of up to 161%. So we're talking about more than doubling your frame rate just by turning anti-aliasing off. And then another thing to note here is it seems to be mainly an issue with the SSAA. So if you guys still want to have some anti-aliasing on, I would recommend using TXAA or FXAA depending on which one you prefer. I don't really personally prefer FXAA. And the TXAA is pretty good, but I don't notice a huge difference in side-by-sides when we're talking about anti-aliasing on in this game and anti-aliasing off. The next one's going to be screen space reflections. This game does have a lot of lighting in it, so it kind of makes sense that you would get about a 10% bump in FPS here. With shadow quality and texture quality coming in, just below that with negligible performance gains. And then everything else is less than 1%. I'm talking about the water tessellation, the motion blur, filtering, depth of field, and bloom. But it is a good thing to note that all of these options are here in the Rhyme settings. So in case you don't like depth of field, it's really nice to be able to turn it off. And same with motion blur, especially. So finally, that's going to let us get down to the nitty gritty of the performance of all of these benchmarks, all of these whew, cards. Did I benchmark right here? Mwah. So <clears throat> we went through the benchmarks and here are the results. Starting out from the least performing card to the best performing card, let's go ahead and take a look at the Gigabyte RX 550 2 gigabyte model, which admittedly is mainly not for games like this. We're talking about playing games like League of Legends, etc. at higher frame rates or maybe getting something better out of CSGO. That aside, in Rhyme, it got a minimum of 14 with an average of 19.1 and a max of 25. The Power Cutler RX 462 gigabyte beats it out by a little bit with a min of 20, an average of 28.57, and a max of 37. Now, keep in mind here that these presets for high does not have anti-aliasing at the SSAA. So you're more looking at maybe only about a 50% increase in frame rate. So at that point, you could get over 30 FPS on your average, but I don't think you're going to really get a 30 FPS bump on your mins there. The Zotac GTX 1050 plays quite a bit better, hitting mins of 33 with an average of 49.6 and a max of 64. The RX 470 also keeps us above that 30 FPS min with a min of 36, an average of 51.08, and a max of 68. 
The GTX 1050 Ti had a minimum of 37, which is not that much more than the, than the RX 470, surprisingly. An average of 54.02 and a max of 72. And the reason I say surprisingly is that this title does seem to favor NVIDIA, not just a little bit, but by a lot. Even to the point to where the visual comparisons between the two, it looks a lot cleaner, especially the, the, the AA implementation, which we obviously already know it has issues with, just seems to not break the game near as much as it does on the AMD cards. The EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte had a minimum, oh, we missed it, didn't we? So you'll see here that the three gigabyte actually does beat out the RX 580, and the RX 580 had a minimum of 44 with an average of 60, and a max of 77, which is formidable, and if you messed with settings a little bit, you could maybe, maybe eke out a pretty good 60 FPS experience. I will clarify that the mins I couldn't get really to go above that 60, and that's just because, as you guys saw, the settings don't really provide any significant boost in FPS, except for the AA, which is kind of a special case because, once again, I think it's broken. The GTX 1063 gigabyte had mins of 57 with an average of 81.8 and a max of 108. And then to get a 60 FPS gaming experience, you would want to take a look at the 1066 gigabyte, which had a minimum of 66, an average of 91.75 and a max of 120. So seeing that the game is kind of broken, it might not be a very fair comparison to put the AMD cards up against the Nvidia cards, especially since the Nvidia cards did actually get a driver release for this with the 382.33, while AMD is still stuck on their latest non-Wickle of 17.5.2, or their Wickle, driver, which is, I think, I believe is still 17.4.4. The reason I'm using the non-wickle drivers for AMD still is because I have RX 500 series cards in here, which seem to just have more issues with the wickle drivers from AMD or from Radeon still. So you're going to want to go with just the latest thing that they have released, at least until those cards start becoming more prominent. That's going to wrap up this performance review for Rhyme from Graybox. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And stay tuned for the performance review of another game from Graybox called Dreadnought, which is a, like I said in the beginning of the video, a free-to-play World of Tanks in Space type game. Super fun. I've been playing it a lot, so definitely stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to check out Patreon at patreon.com slash sonofatech to get the benchmark charts early if you're interested in that sort of thing. It's only a dollar. It's only a dollar, and you can get early access. And they are full 1080p resolution charts that I generate with Excel, and you can download them distribute them however you like. They are, however, watermarked with the Son of a Tech logo, just to make sure I still get credit for them. Once again, I will see you next Tuesday.